Hi everybody, it's Terry. Uh, happy July 4th. Um, it's Saturday. I normally go with my dog um, to visit the Children's Hospital once a month on a Saturday morning, and that's what we did this morning. Um, and I keep asking God, am I supposed to make a video or not? And I want to, um, I feel like he, I know what he wants me to talk about. Evangelism during these last days before the rapture. Let me pray first. Um, Father God, have every word that I say be um, glorifying to you and to be fulfilling your will for my life. I pray for... Um, the families that have gone through so much trial and troubles with their children and that they um, that you hear their prayers and you hear our prayers for these um, innocent ones that you love that they will be healed or raptured very quickly and soon in Jesus name I pray amen okay I've been doing this children's hospital visit for about three years and every month it gets easier and easier um, because I know that I just know it that the children are all going to be raptured now yesterday I spent some time on this to see if this was just in my spirit that I was feeling this or if this is really true because I don't want to be telling people um, something that's not true but I really believe that um, even children of unbelievers even pregnant women who are unbelievers that their babies will all be raptured out of here um, there's something called the age of accountability um, and you could do some research on, on um, uh, a website called uh, gotquestions.org it, it's a great website it has about uh, 450,000 questions that are just answered straight from the Bible without any religion or denomination being reflected um, and there are scriptures that um, indicate that it could be between the age of 13 up to the age of 20 um, of the age of accountability. Um, I don't know about the 20. <laughs> um, I know um, I have taught uh, Sunday school for four-year-olds and I know two four-year-olds that had the Holy Spirit in them. Um, I know other parents who have uh, experienced their children um, receiving Jesus Christ at, at a young age. And it's not impossible because in the Bible, John the Baptist actually had the Spirit within him while he was in his mother's womb. So um, what I have found, I've, I've got a case of Bibles, and what I have found um, is that I've always had the uh, desire to evangelize in my 12 years of being Christian um, that I'm very bold and I, I, almost any conversation I have, I try to get it towards God. Either um, in whatever way that I'm able to do it, I get it to, towards God to either find out whether they're a believer or an unbeliever and then I take it as an opportunity. Whenever I leave my house, I pray and say, God, you know, give me an opportunity. Um, there's a guy that I'm watching um, now. Um, uh, his name is Francis uh, Santa Rose. I think his channel is called Rapture Ready. And he's great. He, he lives the same way. It's like whenever he's out, he's looking for opportunities to heal people. And I, you know, I love listening to him and seeing the joy that comes from using his spiritual gift. Um, I, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to, uh, I've been asking for three years for the gift of healing, and I have seen healings, but they have been um, not as dramatic as, uh, as Francis has experienced. I have also experienced um, people being led to the Lord. So, um, I wanted to talk uh, about uh, you know my last video I was talking about hearing from God and it's very important when we're in these last days um, where people are no longer going to have an opportunity well 
they will have an opportunity during the tribulation, but um, nothing like the opportunity that they have now to ask questions about Jesus, find Jesus, repent of their sins, and be born again. Um, and I, that's what I'm trying to to serve the Lord with is to say, hey, God, use my mouth um, to uh, evangelize. So um, I'm just going to give you some examples of things that have happened. Um, there was a, a woman who was our dental hygienist, um, and my children and I, Every time we saw her, you know, twice a year to get our teeth cleaned, um, we talked to her about what God had told us recently. Now, um, she was what I call a, a spiritual virgin. Um, in Atlanta, it's pretty hard to be a spiritual virgin um, because there's churches everywhere. Uh, it's called the Bible Belt. People uh, go to churches. It's less like that now, um, but when I was growing up here, you know, I didn't know people that didn't go to church. You were either Jewish or you went to church of some kind, right? It was like a social event. Um, but anyway, this girl, um, younger than I, um, had never, had never um, been to church. And so we would tell, I got a mosquito. Um, we would tell her uh, every time when we went, on separate occasions, because we weren't all going to get our teeth cleaned at the same time, we would tell her what um, God had told us. And after about three years, I saw her um, at the end of November, and my other daughter saw her at the beginning of December, and then my other daughter saw her two days before uh, Christmas Eve. And finally, this girl said, this woman said, okay, I know that God speaks to you, and I want him to speak to me too. And so uh, my daughter said, you've, what you've got to do is you've got to get really quiet and ask him to speak to you and then um, expect that he will. And when he does, whatever he says, you've got to go do it. And she, um, that night, prayed to ask God to speak to her. And the next morning, she called me up at 7 in the morning um, crying. She was, these were joyful tears. She said that God had woken, awakened her four times during the night saying, 1 Corinthians 1, 1 Corinthians 1, 1 Corinthians 1. And so she finally got up and read 1 Corinthians 1, and she said she cried in verses 4 through 9. And if you'll read that, um, um, first, and she had never read the Bible. I had given her husband a Bible. And... Um, 1 Corinthians 1 says that you've been forgiven of your sins and you've been given every spiritual gift that you need and that God has invited you into a personal relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. She was so excited. She was like, this is the first time I've ever understood what Christmas is about. She ended up later getting baptized when God told her to go get baptized without even telling us about it because God told her it's between you and me go go get it done and um, so that's an example of uh, evangelism I've done other um, I, I you know I carry around my gospel tracks um, yeah I'm one of those uh, I've been to evangelism training with the way of the master and I love watching um, their productions at Living Waters on YouTube you can watch um, their movies that they've made um, Living Waters movies, they've got Evolution versus God, um, Atheist Delusion, uh, Audacity, just great movies, but they teach you how to evangelize. And if we are his sheep and we are given the Great Commission to go and make disciples, um, we have got to be um, without fear. You know, the Bible commands us not to fear anyone who can kill us, but to fear God, who can kill us and put our soul in hell. So if we have been blessed with being born again, um, it's just our responsibility to go and share, right? And, 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 you know, also with the great commandment that we are to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love others. Well, what's the most loving thing to do? 
is to tell other people about Jesus and what you have found. So um, now as we are approaching these end times, and I have my gospel tracts, sometimes I just go put them on people's cars, sometimes I um, go up and tell people, but I always point to the law, which is what um, the met this method is, is to point out that we're all sinners in need of a savior. And so I point out that, you know, you know, have you have you said a lie that makes you a liar? If you've stolen anything that makes you a thief? If you've lusted after anyone or have, you know, premarital sex, you're guilty of adultery. And just to show them their guilt, because I was guilty too. And um, when you see that you're, you're guilty, then God gives you his grace of repentance and faith. Um, and we all know that you must be born again in order to enter heaven and that many will say lord lord i was singing in the choir i was in church i was a good person and uh I, and in my case i would have said i got baptized at 12 and he would have said go away i never knew you so now what i'm doing is i and i'm sort of rambling i'm sorry but now what i'm doing is i have a case of bibles in my car in addition to my um gospel tracts and i'm purposely trying to go up and well first of all I always ask God if give me an opportunity uh, and so I'm always looking to see who is the person I'm supposed to talk to um, but I'm I'm now trying to tell people you know go on YouTube and look and I've had three rapture dreams and other people are having rapture dreams and even little two-year-olds that can barely talk are saying Jesus is coming Jesus is coming and I try to tell them that they're children, and I know that I'll say, you're going to think I'm crazy, but you obviously see there's a lot of bad stuff going on. We've had floods, we've had um, tsunamis, we've had uh, tornadoes, we've had a, all these earthquakes are happening, plus we have all these wars and rumors of wars in North Korea and Iran and all of that, you know, we we are in the end times, and if they would go and research it, they would find out that time is is coming to a close, and it's time to repent. And I tell them that their children are going to be taken away, that their children are going to be raptured, and I try to explain to them that it's because Jesus loves them, and don't you want to be with your child for eternity? I, I tell them, you know, I'll, I'll say, well, you know, I'm not with my three kids right now, but I have the assurance of knowing that they all, they were all born again before I was, and that being born again comes from repentance and having faith in Jesus Christ that he died on the cross for your sins. Like, I would, I tell them when I was going through it, I would imagine Jesus being on the cross and I've got a spear and I'm stabbing him in the side for my sins and that through that I, I gained forgiveness and I was able to walk in a new life not a perfect life I still you know I'm still trying to get ready <laughs> I'm still asking God to take some things away from me that I um, I haven't been sanctified yet um, so you know all of us whether we have been believing for a year six months or 30 years we all need to be getting ready but it is an excellent opportunity and I have found that uh, generally speaking I don't know if it's because God is sending me to these people or whether um, I, well God is sending me to the people that's what it is because I pray and say you know tell me who I'm supposed to meet and and you know like I I run into somebody I haven't uh, who's you know she's 28 she was my daughter's best friend in school and I haven't seen her since she was in sixth grade and I run into her to, when I'm voting and I I tell her this I tell her you know your baby is going to heaven and I'm giving you would you take a Bible and read your Bible every day and ask God to take you too? ask him to save you and t to take you in the rapture too um, we just have you know it's so sad to think about um, how many people are going to be left behind. And as we are in the end days, just like the Bible says, there are so many false teachers with false gospels. Um, 
big churches, mega churches, which I have been in one in Atlanta, and it's a false message. It's a it's a feel good gospel. It's a man centered, cheap grace, easy believism. Just keep on living however you want, and just tell God you're so sorry every week. Um, and they're going to hear, go away, I never knew you, because they have never repented and received the Holy Spirit who then brings us a change of life with a change of mind where your mind is renewed, where the Spirit is guiding you and directing you. And um, I mean, you know, think about it. Um, Joel Osteen's church, I'm going to name names, Joel Osteen's church, Andy Stanley, all these big mega churches, they're just in it for the money and to make people feel good. Um, and it makes me really sad. Now, I'm not saying that every single person that goes to those churches, but if you have the Holy Spirit and you hear something that doesn't agree with the Bible, um, you know, it, it hurts you. It's like you get stabbed in the gut or punched in the gut. And if you think that just going to church and not having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ by reading the Word, He is the Word made flesh, I, I fear for your soul. I really do. Um, I do. A relationship, you know, just read, just read um, Revelation 2 and 3, the letters to the churches. These were to people in the church. And he's still saying, only, you know, he's like, he said, one of the churches, you're dead. Y'all are dead. And, you know, basically anybody who's in church is a dead man walking if they do not have the Holy Spirit inside them, letting them walk by the Spirit always, right? Um, and yes, sanctification is that we grow to walk by the Spirit more and more and that we're able to see, oh, I gave up that sin or, oh my goodness, you know, like I got knocked off a bike. Um, I was I was riding my bike and this lady's dog jumped out at my dog and knocked me over and when I got up I was like oh well I'm glad everything's okay and wow I can't believe your dog did that and she's like did what and I was like okay bye and I walked to my car and I'm thinking wow thank you God that I used to man if somebody did something to me like that I would have been angry I would have been giving him a piece of my mind and no I did not and it turns out you know I'm going back to my car and my car has on the back of it um, got questions the Bible has the answers for the got questions um, dot org uh, website and I've got a big cross you know hanging down from my um, rearview mirror and so I was like thank you God that I kept calm I didn't blow up um, and you know that I had the fruit of the spirit of patience and gentleness <laughs> I'm always praying that uh, uh, Philippians 4 4 through 8 4 through 9 is really what I like but you know it says let your gentleness be evident to all I'm not really known you know I'm more known as an Elijah instead of an Elisha I'm I'm pretty bold and don't care too much about um, I, I mean, the gospel, the gospel, the true gospel is offensive to people. It's offensive. And also, people who are in the world who do not want Jesus to come back because they think, you know, I can just keep on living this way and, at the, and you know, when I get old and I'm in my hospital bed, but then I can say I'm sorry and, you know, get Jesus then. It's going to be too late because we're moving from 5777 to 5778 Feast of Trumpets 777 Perfect Completion 8 New Beginnings plus we got the Revelation 12 sign plus we have the August 21st um, uh, Great American Solar Eclipse that hasn't happened in 99 years and back then they had a day of fasting prayer and repentance before it came and God is not happy with America and yeah a man you know I think he's even more mad at the people who who say they're Christians and preach false gospels you know um, yeah he is 
and then I, I just thought of the verse in Proverbs because I had I had someone tell me, oh, you know, um, God isn't really mad with people. You know, He loves everybody. And I was actually talking um, to a well-known pastor. I won't mention his name, but a huge mega church pastor. I was talking to him. He says, no, God loves everybody. You know, well, yes, God loves everybody enough that he he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. But it also says in Proverbs, I'm not exactly sure where, but it says God is angry with the wicked either every day. And if you read 1 John 3, there's no riding the fence, which so many people want to do. They want to ride the fence. But if you read 1 John 3, it says this is how you can tell who is a child of God and who is a child of the devil. It's black and white. People want it to be gray, but it is black and white. You are either born again and born of the Spirit, or you are not. And I pray, I pray for the lost, and I hope that you will pray for the lost too if you've been watching this and you're a believer. I hope you will pray for the lost, that um, we will all be given many opportunities before this next three months is up to bring people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I, I pray so much for Him to increase the kingdom, for Him to seek and save the lost, but using us to go find them. And if you don't know Jesus, put it in your put it in the comments. I'll be glad to um, uh, show you some things to, to look at, to see, um, you know, what your real standing is right now. And I pray for everyone, everyone either work for the Lord or get to know the Lord. And here comes the rain. <laughs> so thank you for listening. God bless you. And I, I pray for you, and, and please pray for me too. To, let's all be fruitful and make many people escape the wrath that is to come. In Jesus' name is what I'm praying, by his power. He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and he is coming back to meet us in the clouds. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.